The PlayStation Vita isn't a big seller, which is a bit of a shame because it's pretty awesome and it's had new life breathed into it thanks to its ability to play nice with the PlayStation 4. And now Sony's given it a slender makeover, officially known as the PCH200 or the PlayStation Vita Slim to normal people. Side by side, the Vita Slim doesn't look or feel quite as premium as before, with more plastic under the fingers and a visible edge around the screen. The silver highlights have gone, as have the tiny PlayStation symbols on the rear touchpad that have now been replaced by boring dots. It doesn't look significantly smaller face on, but the 3.6mm cut to the depth is immediately obvious, and it's the new curvier shape and soft touch material that contributes most to making this a much nicer console to hold. The analog sticks, D-pad and symbol buttons are the same, but the PlayStation Select and Start buttons are now a little bigger and circular, which makes them a little easier to find while your eyes remain fixed on the screen. Now, the original Vita's OLED display was one of its most exciting features, but the Slim has gone with old-fashioned LCD, but we actually prefer it. The resolution remains the same at 960 by 544 pixels, and while the Vita's OLED certainly has deeper blacks, which has a sharpening effect on edges, the Slim's LCD digs up more detail in darkness, revealing objects and textures in dark scenes that the old Vita misses. It's more subtle in its colour reproduction too, has a purer white balance and offers a more realistic reproduction of movies. Now, unlike before, the Vita Slim comes with one gig of internal storage, but with many games coming in at over three gig, it's still not enough. Adding a 16 gig card costs around 25 pounds, but it doesn't actually add anything as it makes the built-in storage unavailable. But on a more positive note, gone is that stupid proprietary cable replaced by standard micro USB. Battery life has also gone up by an hour, so you're now looking at around four to six hours of constant play in between charges. It's just a bit of a shame there's no 3 or 4G. The games available are rarely referred to as blockbusters, but there are some brilliant titles such as Tear Away. There's also a pretty huge catalogue of old PS1 and PS2 games ready and waiting to be revisited. Then there's Remote Play, which lets you take complete control of your PS4, including playing your PS4 games on the Vita. You lose a little graphical fidelity, but games still look awesome on the 5-inch screen, and you can play anywhere in the house via your home network. And as it mirrors what the PS4 is doing, you could use the Vita as an extra control pad. Best of all, you can control your PS4 from anywhere in the world, as long as you've got Wi-Fi internet access. Just remember, performance varies wildly depending on connection quality. And finally, there's a whole bunch of apps you're probably not going to use, such as Google Maps, email and a camera, but the video section of the PlayStation Store, which has an ever-expanding catalogue of movies and TV shows, could very well come in handy. It's also a shame it's not any cheaper than the original, especially given the cheaper construction, but it's definitely better. It's just not quite the must-have it would have been had Sony have pushed the boat out just that little bit further.